This next lesson is number six, the regions and reference geometry in the Geomagic for SolidWorks plugin. We're going to start this lesson by opening up a new document here, new part, and we will import an STL file, numbers, number six, the regions and reference geometry. Should import pretty quick, pretty small file. And this is a very prismatic geometric part. A lot of times when we have parts like this, we're going to be using a me mechanical reverse engineering workflow. And uh, in a lot of cases, that's going to require extracting some reference geometry, like planes or vectors or even points from the scan data. Um, and we'll do that for a couple different reasons. Of course, one of them would be to create sketches on those reference planes. Um, also using a extracted axis to do a revolved geometry, for example. And we even use these for things like aligning our scan data to the coordinate system, like in this case, my coordinate system and my origin are in no way related to any geometric features on this part. We're going to start with the most basic uh, reference geometry that we have, and we're going to find that uh, with our reference plane here. So far, since we've been going through these last couple of lessons, we've gone from a general left to right workflow. We've started with either importing or scanning uh, some, some data to bring in some scan data into the plugin. We'll use the alignment tools to align multiple scans to one another, and then either uh, modify them as point clouds or modify them as a mesh object or create a mesh object from those point clouds and this is the next logical step here starting to extract some of the geometries from uh, from our parts so I'm going to grab my reference plane tool and I'm going to build the most basic type of reference plane that I can which is a best fit to some manually selected scan data points I'm going to use my paintbrush tool here and I'm just gonna paint a few triangles on the back of my part when I do that the software almost instantly creates a preview this yellow colored box here of a plane that is best fit to all of the triangles that I've selected now if that plane happens to be close within five degrees or so of uh, a system plane being normal to the y-axis for example we actually can force it to be truly parallel to the y or the x or the z-axis if it's close using the snap to world option here if it's close to being parallel to another component maybe I had another plane built on this feature here and I wanted to make sure that those two planes were parallel to one another I could constrain the planes orientation here they kind of do the same thing these two options they really just uh, they only differ in the fact that this could be basically any plane this could be a world axis only We'll talk about what the optimized selection does later. It's actually more useful in some other tools like the uh, the automatic modeling wizards. But one of the things that we do want to check is, you know, I can manually rotate the part around, spin it around, see that that preview plane that I get, it looks like it fits the data pretty well. But analytically, I have no way of um, figuring that out. So. If I run my deviation analysis, I can actually get some real world numbers telling me how close that best fit plane is to my scan data. Right now, when I run that tool, it displays a color map on the screen and different colors here conform to different uh, deviation values from that best fit plane to the scan data so getting darker shades of red as it gets worse deviation in a positive direction darker shades of blue in the negative direction and in the middle here I've got a green area and you'll notice that these numbers I'm in inches right now these numbers are very very small on the order of like a one one millionth of an inch or something ridiculous like that I want to make this a more meaningful result so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change from whatever ridiculous number that I have to 0 0.005 for example so five thousandths of an inch when I type that value in and hit enter the whole screen or the, all of the triangles that I selected before turn green indicating that they are within that deviation value that I've specified here five thousandths if I tighten up my tolerance a little bit, maybe go down to one thousandth, yeah, not much happens. So I need to keep getting tighter 
to really start to see any deviation values. And I'm starting to see a couple here, but I really need to get super, super low before I start to see any deviation values. So I know that I've got very, very good fit to the data. I'll go ahead and hit OK, and this builds a system plane, or it builds a CAD feature plane, just like you would inside of SolidWorks. And this is editable, but it's important to note that that feature, even though it is technically editable, doesn't have any relationship to the scan data any longer. The software, or the plugin rather, just puts that plane exactly at that location. I can't go back and edit where, uh, or what triangles were used to best fit that plane. If I need to do that, the best bet is just to delete that plane uh, and start over. Next thing I want to do is I want to use my reference axis tool. And if I look at my part, I see some areas here, these cutouts here, they look like they're cylindrical. And if I want to know the center line of that cylinder, all I need to do is make a selection on those triangles and define whether or not I believe that region is cylindrical or if it's conical. In this case, I'm going to say it's cylindrical. But instead of using the general selection tool like I did on the best fit plane, I'm actually going to use the smart selection tool. Smart selection tool is curvature based. All I need to do is make a selection inside the region that I'm looking at and drag it up. And you'll notice that it's slow to react, but I am starting to add a couple new points right here. So this is actually moving my mouse cursor up and down changes the cur uh, curvature threshold from lower to higher. So it's looking at the angles between the polygons and saying, you know, within this threshold, we can make a selection. As I grow that selection, eventually I get too out of control and I select too much. So the goal is to select triangles just enough to get a good collection of data from, and you get a preview with a yellow cir or two yellow circles indicating the cylinder ends and a purple axis which is what I'm going to be extracting here. I have the same options I did before, snap to world, if that axis is gonna be parallel to the X, Y, or Z axis, or I've got a, a, the ability to constrain that axis's direction to another axis. And just like we did before, I've got deviation analysis here. I'm gonna make that number something meaningful. All of my fitting is within a thousand, so I know that that cylinder is very accurate to the scan data, therefore the vector that I'm uh, extracting from it is also nice and accurate. I'll go ahead and hit OK, and it builds an axis. And just like before, if I right click and edit this, I can edit it, I can move it around a little bit, but uh, really not the way that, you know, we're able to bring that back to the scan data. I can't really relate it to the scan data, so. The last type of reference geometry that we're gonna create here is a symmetry plane. And it, if we look at this part from the top down, we should be able to notice that this does have a line of symmetry that exists basically between this plane here and that plane here. The symmetry plane tool, when I open it up, is going to have me manually draw a line to bisect the mesh into two symmetrical halves. So what I need to do is I need to rotate my view around so that I'm looking at this more or less from the top down and I need to draw a line that exists somewhere down the center. I'm gonna do this deliberately imperfect so we can watch the software do its work. And when I let go, I get a preview plane, this green plane here, saying that this is my initial guess at a symmetry plane. When I move over and select detailed preview, the software actually does the calculations. And the next plane that I get is my actual symmetry plane. So now I have equal amounts of mesh on top and on bottom of this plane. When I hit OK, I get another plane here. Now the software can actually automatically recognize distinct areas of the scan data that kind of conform to a, a geometry. So like we saw before, you know, the smart selection tool was able to figure out that this area here is um, all the same shape, essentially. We can consider that to be a region. Same thing with this area here, this flat area. 
uh, is a different region as well. And if I don't want to do this manual selection when I'm creating reference geometries or some of the modeling operations that we do later on, I can actually let the software analyze the part for me to facilitate in making selections later on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select those three reference geometries from before and hide them. And then I'm going to open up my regions tool. Regions tool works a little bit like that smart select tool in that it looks at the curvature of the scan data and it will assign a color to all of the triangles in it that per pertain to a particular region. The curvature sensitivity here is analogous to dragging the mouse up in the smart selection so it defines how much change of curvature is required to break a given area of scan data up into multiple regions and the connecting region width here is essentially how thick of a gap I want between my individual regions. If I leave these at the default I can hit the detailed preview and what it'll do is it will say okay all of these triangles in here we're going to color them differently from all of the neighboring triangles to make them stand out as a unique piece of geometry. And for the most part, everything that would become a CAD face in here does have its own region assigned. The one thing that I do find that's a little bit of an issue are these areas right here. It looks like I've got a very small plane connected to a larger cylinder, and the software didn't pick up on that. Now, I could go back in and I could adjust my sensitivity, maybe get out of preview mode, crank up my sensitivity a little bit, hit preview again and it should give me more regions more sensitivity here gives me more regions but when I do adjust the curvature sensitivity I also start generating more regions in areas where I would like there to be only one region like all of these areas here should all be just one cylinder each so if that curvature sensitivity becomes too high you start seeing some effects that you know might be less than desirable. So I'm going to go back to the default curvature sensitivity, hit preview, get back where I was before, and instead of trying to let the software automatically recognize that this area here is its own region, I'm going to use my edit region tool. So if I use my select triangles tool basically this just gives me access to my paintbrush a very very thin paintbrush if I drag across a region see how it broke that up into two separate regions there I can do the same thing down here I'll do it one more time using the select triangles this basically puts a separator between two regions drag all the way through there this region is now separated into two regions. And I can do the opposite of that. Deselect triangles here will allow me to remove a separator. And now these regions are connected again. I can change my paintbrush size, something a little bit bigger, drag back down and connect those two regions into one. When I exit the tool and I enter one of my reference geometry tools, like my reference plane here, I can see that I've got a new mode that's enabled here, which is select regions. Now instead of using the smart selection or manual selection tools to create this plane, I simply select that region and all of the triangles that are constrained within it are pre-selected and I can best fit to that very quickly.